Let's create a concept model for an airplane. We'll start with the document settings. I'm going to change the units to feet. Now we'll start with the Create Form tool. Inside the Sculpt environment, I will select Cylinder. Click the vertical plane. And I'm going to zoom out, get to more of an airplane size. I'll do 15 feet. Set the diameter to 15 feet. And I'll make my height 80 feet. Zoom out and see the results. This is the fuselage of the airplane. I'll say OK. Now I'll create the airplane nose. I can right click and say edit form. By double clicking a line I get the whole ring of lines. and I can drag this to where I think I want the nose to be. Make a few adjustments. I can hold the alt key down on my keyboard while I move and that will add an additional ring of faces. I can scale and hold alt and use the move command and scale to start to create the nose shape of the airplane. I go to my side view and adjust these. to get the nose shape I'm looking for. When I'm happy with the nose shape, I can say modify, fill hole, select this edge, then I can adjust the fill hole mode I might do a fill star to get that airplane nose. Now for the rear of the airplane I can make additional adjustments. I can right click and say edit form. Double click to grab that entire ring. I can hold alt on my keyboard to add an additional ring. And then use the scale tools to scale that down and the move arrows to adjust this up. I'll repeat that, pull this out, scale it down to where I'd like it to be, go to my right view, and move this up and out where I'd like it to be. I can repeat that, holding Alt and then scaling and moving until I have this rear of the plane exactly how I'd like it. Adjust this up. Can double click these rings. Get the curvature exactly where I'd like it to be. When I'm happy with the tail of the airplane, I can go ahead and say OK to my edit form and select modify fill hole, select this rear hole, and the fill star is fine, I'll say OK. From here I can create the wings. Uh, for this example, I might use a box, create box, put this on the ground plane. I'll be sure to hover over the center point, I get this blue box lets me know I found the center point. And if I pull that away, I get this blue dashed line. It lets me know I'm still aligned with the center point. And that's important so that my wings can be symmetrical. Click and drag the box out. I have a few adjustments here in the box command that I can pull, push and pull to get the wingspan where I'd like it to be. So I'm happy with that. I can right click and do the edit form command. If I double click on a face, I select the entire object. And I can then pull that down. Airplane wings are usually located lower on the fuselage. Pull that down. Then I can add symmetry. 
And to see this better, I'm going to turn off the first body, the fuselage, and click Symmetry Mirror Internal. And to make this work, I click two opposing sides, and I notice that this green symmetry line appears, letting me know that both sides are now symmetrical. So if I say OK, and then I'm using Control or Command if you have a Mac to select more than one face, as I select them on the right side, you can see they turn yellow on the left side, meaning they're both going to be symmetric if I only adjust one side. I'll select both faces, right click and edit form, and I can use the rotate and other adjustment tools to make this wing how I'd like it to be. I turn on my original fuselage and I can see the results. Let's create the tail wings. I'll create a box, set the box on the ground plane, find the center point, which I can find here, pull the mouse away and I get this dashed line, I can create the box, give it some height, and say OK. If I'd like, I can add symmetry to this box as well. Select Mirror Internal, get that green symmetry line. Now I double click the box and I can right click and say Edit Form. With the whole box selected, I can move this into place. Now, with it in place, I can make sure I'm selecting all in my selection filter, grab this face, and I can rotate and adjust to get this airplane tail how I'd like it to be. Hold Control or Command to grab two sides and adjust that in as I'd like to. I can make adjustments as needed to get the tail shape that I'm looking for. Once I have that tail shape, I can create another box for the rear winglets. Set those on the ground plane. Find my origin again and pull that away. Click to set that winglet box. And adjust the height and the width and I'll say OK. I can add symmetry. Left and right are the same. I can make a few adjustments. I'm happy with that. I can double click one of the faces to select the entire winglet. right-click to edit form and move that winglet up into place. Once I'm happy with this, I can start to model the motors. And click the create form. I'm going to do a cylinder. Put it on the vertical plane. I'll go to my front view so I can place this where I'd like it to go. Motors come in different places. I can go below the aircraft or sometimes up behind in the rear of the aircraft. I'll do mine on the ladder. Set the diameter and the length. I'll say OK. And then I can make some adjustments here. Double click to grab a whole ring of lines and I can edit the form. I can hold the Alt key to add some material. Continue to hold the Alt key to pull that in, add it back. I can adjust these rings down 
in size. Sometimes it's good to actually delete some. Say OK here, double click and delete. So I have a little bit less to work with. And I might keep that last one. Double click, edit form. I'm going to hold Control or Command, double click. I have two at the same time, and I can scale these down. Be sure to grab this corner scale button. Scale it down, and the rear one, scale that down further. Give it that jet engine shape. Now find this internal piece that I pulled all the way through. Should be in here. So it's right here, double click that. And I can pull it through all the way back. It's going to give me problems when it pulls through right there. It's going to be a problem. I'm just going to pull it all the way out for now. And then I can scale it down until it fits inside the previous motor. Now one problem with this is it's only a surface, so if I want to actually make it a solid, I need to bridge these last two pieces together. So I'll say modify, and I'll select bridge. I'll double click this ring, and then this ring, and I'll change the faces to two, and I'll say OK. So there it is. Now it's going to be a solid for me. If I want to, I can make further adjustments. But I need to take care to not overlap the edges. If I do that, this will have problems solving. So I can pull this in, but I'll have to make sure I also scale this down so there are no overlapping faces. And to double check I don't have overlap overlapping faces, I can say finish form. If it finishes, I'm okay. I'm going to hit undo to go back into the edit mode. And now that I have one motor, I don't need to repeat that process. I can be simply mirror it across and I can say symmetry mirror duplicate. Select this motor, select the mirror plane, and there I go. I've got two of these now. Now I can make some additional adjustments. For example, I can right click and select edit form, and maybe I want to pull these two down to create more of a window area for the nose of the plane. make my final adjustments, get the curvature and the shape I want. And there I go. I can continue adding some details, but I think we'll call this good for now, and I'll say finish form. And there's the finished airplane body. Now we want to add some details to this, and we can do that using the normal model tools. First off, if we want the airplane to be hollow inside, we'll go select Modify, and we'll select Shell. Select that fuselage, and we can give this a thickness. Now in Fusion, I can change dimensions when I type this in. So if I know the thickness is 4 inches, I can type 4 space IN, and then say OK. Be sure to save our model before we go too far along in the process. 
If we want to double check that this really is hollow inside, we can go to inspect, section analysis, pick this vertical plane, and I can see I've got a four inch thickness throughout that fuselage. Now let's create some windows. I'm going to do that by creating an offset plane, construct offset plane. I will turn on my origin by clicking this little light bulb. Then I can click this vertical plane and use the blue arrow to pull an offset plane from there. This will give me a work plane that's out in front of the airplane I can use to sketch my windows. I'll sketch my windows with the ellipse tool. Select that outside work plane. And then draw in some windows. Start towards the front. A little bit long for my taste so I can make some adjustments. Get the window how I want it to be exactly. See if that looks okay. Back a little bit. Once I'm happy with that oval, I'm going to sketch and do a rectangular pattern. Grab this oval or ellipse. I can drag this blue arrow to create additional windows. And then I can change the quantity to as many as I'd like. Now this is not the correct direction, that's the up direction, so I'm going to change that to 1. And then the side to side direction, let's increase this. There's 4, there's 5. Stretch that out to where I want it to be, and I'll say OK. Now I can select Stop Sketch, go to my Home View, and I have these window sketches out here in front of the plane. What I can do next is select Modify, Split Body, and split this airplane, and the splitting tool are these windows. You'll notice you can only do one at a time, so I'll say OK. Then go to my sketches and turn the window sketch back on with this light bulb and repeat that process. Modify, split body. Body to split, splitting tool, and I'll go ahead and repeat that for all five of these windows. Right click, I can repeat that last command, split body, select the tool, say OK, right click, repeat split body, the body, select the splitting tool, say OK, and one more time. And there it is. I've got windows on both sides. Now those windows are 4 inches thick, so I might want to reduce that down. First I can turn off this sketch. I might name it. I can double click and call this window sketch. I don't need it anymore, but I might come back to it. I'll turn it off. Then I can select modify, press and pull. I can see is the Q command, press and pull, or Q on my keyboard. And I can select the face of all of these windows on both sides. And I'll do a minus two inches. Minus two IN. Make sure that I pulled it the right direction. I go to the front view and it looks like it's okay. I'll say okay here. And there are my windows, and I can see they're offset a bit from the airplane. And now I might want to come back and create the front window here. It's a similar process. Go ahead and save my model where it's at. And I will do a sketch. I will do the create sketch. And before I do that, I can click here and create the sketch here. But for me, it makes a little more sense to do it out in front, where I'm going to put that window for the airplane. So I'm going to do construct, offset plane, 
grab this plane and pull it out towards the front of the airplane, right in front there. Now I can do sketch and create sketch. I'm going to select that plane. Now I might draw a few lines as guides, so I'm going to do a line. Click that center point. Go up here, directly vertical from the center point. I think the middle of that window is going to be, and then come out to the side of this window here. And four feet, that looks good. And I'll repeat the line command again. I hit L on my keyboard, and out four feet again. Now these lines are just guides, so I can select them and I can change them over here to construction lines. I don't really need them as part of my sketch because what I, want, what I want to create is a slot. And I can do a center to center slot. And so from this point over to that point, then I can set the size. So something like this for the pilot's windows. And I'll say stop sketch. Go to my home view. And now I can select Modify, Split Body, grab the Airplane Fuselage, and the splitting tool is this. And it's going to cut that window through the front of the plane. Now it will go through the back as well, and that's okay. I'll say okay for now. So I've got a window in the front, and then I have one in the back. Now if I don't want this one in the back, there's a little trick. I can say Modify combine and select the fuselage and this little window and you notice they heal right back up together again and yet it maintains the window in the front. I'm going to use the press and pull again so modify press and pull. This time I went over several surfaces so I've got to select all four of these just click on each face And I'll do the minus two inches again, two inches. So I've got that, I say OK. And I've got that front window. It's a great time to save, so I'll hit the save icon. Say OK. Now I want to add a connector for these motors, these jet engines. I'm just going to create a sketch. I'll do a line. And I'll place the line on this ground plane here. Right there. And I can draw the sketch. Snap to the center point. I'll start back here. Come up a little bit into the motor. Here and then back. There it is. Now I may not want to go all the way back to the center point. You know what? This is just a connector. So I can draw a straight line right here. And now I can use the sketch and then trim command. And I can trim away any excess lines. So I have just the connector. Now I want to do both sides. So I'm going to create an additional line, sketch line, right from this center point as a guideline. So there it is. And like we did before, we'll select it and change it to a construction line. We don't really need it, it's just there as a guide. And so now I can do sketch and I can select mirror. The objects are the objects of my connector. And the mirror line is this guy right here. See it mirrors it across. And I'll say OK and stop sketch. I go to my home view, turn off my origin, it's kind of in the way there, orbit this around a little bit, and I can use the modify, press and pull, grab these two shapes, I can pull them up a bit. Now by default, if they've overlapped, Fusion's going to want to cut these, I don't want to do that, and I do not want to join, because then they'll be the same object. I want to do the new body, so they're separate. 
And then I'll say OK. And double check that that looks OK, it's in the right place. And I'm good. Can always go back and make more adjustments to that if we need to. But for now, I can wrap up. I'll add some fillets. So I'll say modify fillet. And I can grab some of these edges that I might want to fillet, for example, at the windows. Grab some of these outer rings. Select each one as I go. And I'll flip over to the other side here and grab these as well. And for my dimension here, I will do one inch. So I'll do one space IN. So let's put a nice curve around those windows and I'll say OK. And now I can add some materials to this plane. I can right click and find the appearance. And go down to my paint. Select a glossy paint for this. And I'll do a white gloss for the fuselage. And I can paint that on the wings. And anywhere else I'd like to paint that. Now notice that my radial dial up here is set to bodies or components. I'm going to apply it to the entire body. And that's fine for now. I can apply that across. If I want to apply to an individual face, I can switch that up and change that from bodies to faces. And I can add material just on certain faces if I'd like. That face is kind of small, so I'll zoom in a little bit. Apply that there. And now I'll change this back to bodies and do my windows. So I have some glass here. Smooth glass. And I'll do this glass clear. And I'll apply that to the windows. Grab each one of those. Add that glass all the way around. All right, and there it is. Now, of course, we could add some more details, but for now, we'll go ahead and say close, save this. And we'll shoot over to our render environment, switch from model over to render. And we'll click our setup for scene settings. And I'll change the background to an environment. Go to the environment library, and I'll find one of these environments that has some clouds. Double click that. And then we can adjust the view get our airplane up there flying. I can find the right background that's going to be uh, just right for this airplane. Once we're happy with that, we can adjust our scene settings. We'll change our focal length a little bit, give some more drama, and then we can do our aspect ratio 16 by 9. And now we can zoom and adjust to get this airplane exactly where we want it on screen here. Looking up a little bit, so it looks like it's up there in the sky for us. Then we can click the render button and the render button again, and it's going to render to the cloud. And when that's done, we'll find it here in our re render gallery. Thank you.